Something very special happened inside the neonatal intensive care unit at this hospital in Worcester, Massachusetts. October 17, 1995, twin girls were born here, 12 weeks premature. When you see little girls with their dolls, one of the tiny dolls, imagine that maybe just a little bit smaller. Each weighing only about two pounds. This is the twins' father, Paul Jackson. The nurses in the NICU were, they're very honest. And they say, they told me up front that things look pretty good now, but to be honest with you, that in the next 48 to 72 hours, they said things can turn very quickly. And turn it did. When they were only three weeks old, one of the twins was struggling to breathe. Her heart rate was soaring, her oxygen level dropping quickly, and she was turning blue. Not only was she having the spells, but they were severe. A nurse had the novel idea of taking the stronger twin and putting her in the same incubator as her sister, a procedure that at the time had never been done before in the U.S. And it was one of those things that was you know, it happened very quickly, and they really couldn't move that much, but it was, it was a little bit of a squirm, and the arm kind of just went up. The healthier sister, tiny Kyrie Jackson, put her arm around her sister Brielle. Her breathing and vital signs instantly stabilized. The image captured by a newspaper photographer who happened to be at the hospital. This heartwarming picture, dubbed the rescuing hug, was seen in newspapers around the world, in Life magazine and Reader's Digest. It highlighted the amazing healing power of touch. That was 17 years ago. And the girls? Now all grown up. The one down the bottom there is one. دوستان به برنامه مام تاک مادر و کودک خوش آمدید من دکتر نلی فرنودی زهیری هستم و در این بخشی از برنامه در رابطه با قدرت و اون به صلاح نیرویی که در یک آغوش در یک بغل در یک در آغوش گرفتن هستش قرار هستش که با هم صحبت بکنیم میهمان گرامی برنامه امروز من the hug doctor کسی هستن که او ایشون هم روانشناس هستن و دکترای روانشناسی دارن منتها قصه خیلی جالبی دارن در رابطه با اینکه چرا نفوذ و قدرت یک بغل یک آغوش یک hug به قول ما اینجا آمریکایی‌ها میتونه زندگی یک فرد رو عوض بکنه و او رو از جایی که ضعف و رنج و درد تجربه میکنه به جایی که شفقت، مهر، دوستی، مهربانی و قدرت تجربه میکنه بکشونه. در این پروسه در این جابجایی به صلاح از ضعف به قدرت همونطور که در این ویدیوی کوتاه تماشا کردین دختر کوچکی خواهر کوچکی خواهر کوچکی که چندین هفته بیشتر عمر نداره دو پوند بیشتر وزنش نیست و در کنار خواهر دوقلوی ضعیفترش که در اون زمان نرسایی که در نیکیو کار میکردن فکر کردن که او زندگیشو داره میبازه زندگیشو داره از دست میده بنابراین در یک نقطه زمان که ناامیدی تمام این بیمارستان رو و شاید این نیکیو سنتر رو به صلاح گرفته بوده یکی از این نرسا که با هوشیاری با به صلاح اون انتویشن با هوشیاری به خصوصی تصمیم میگیره که این خواهر قدرتمند یا خواهری که زندگیش قوی تر بود در اون لحظه در کنار خواهری که ضعیفتر هستش قرار بده و در اون نقطه زمانی چه اتفاقی میفته خواهری که قدرت بیشتر داره زندگیش قوی تر هستش سلامت تر هستش و تواناییش بیشتر هستش آغوش خودش رو در اون بیست و چند هفتگی که اول زندگیش هستش با شهامت و مهارت به خصوصی میاره و در کنار خواهر ضعیفش که در کنارش خوابیده و در حال مرگ هستش بغل میکنه او رو دستش رو روی اون خواهر میذاره و در اون لحظه نرسایی که در اون بیمارستان هستن شاهد این هستن که اون نوزاد 
اون کودک ناتوان اون کودک ناامید از ناامیدی از ناتوانی از مرگ از به صلاح سکوی مرگ جهش میکنه و به سوی روشنایی به سوی توانایی به سوی قدرت و به سوی آرامش و زندگی میاد در این لحظه هستش که قدرت آغوش گرفتن قدرت کمک رسانی قدرت بغل کردن قدرت به صلاح جابجایی انرژی مثبت و انرژی توانمندی به کس دیگه به خصوص از طریق پوست به خصوص از پوست به پوست در این بیمارستان به صلاح میبینن که اتفاق افتاده در این بیمارستان اتفاق میفته به انجام میفته و اون نرسا و کسانی که اونجا هستن از اون به بعد تصمیم گیری هایی که می گرفتن در رابطه با نوزادان و کسانی که تازه به دنیا آمدن به خصوص دو که زودتر به دنیا میان و ضعیفتر هستن عوض میشه. برای همین تیتر عنوان این ویدیویی که CNN هم این قصه رو دنبال کرد و به صلاح پخش کرد برای شما این هستش که a hug that changed the course of medicine یا اون قدرتی که در یک آغوش در یک بغل زندگی و مسیر پزشکی رو تغییر داد چرا چون تا قبل از اون این دو قلوها رو جدا نگه می داشتن و در اینکیوبیتر ها در جاهای مختلف به اینها رسیدگی می کردن در اون لحظه به این نتیجه رسیدن که وقتی که نوزاد به خصوص نوزادی که زود به دنیا آمده و ضعیف هست و توانمندی نداره اون نوزاد احتیاج و نیاز به کنگرو کیر داره اصلا این عنوان سکین تو سکین کیر این عنوانه که رو بدن بچه رو بذارن و رو بدن حفظ بکنن و بذارن که نوزاد اون اتچمنت یا باند و کنکشنی که داره با مادرش با پدرش با کیرگیورش با اون نرسش این قدرت کنکشن و قدرت آغوش یا بغل گرفتن یا قدرت به صلاح بدن به بدن اینجا در پزشکی و روان پزشکی و روانشناسی اهمیت بسیار بسیار خاصی پیدا کرد و اون عنوان کنگرو کیر که مثل یک کانگرو که کانگرو بچهشو در شکمش نگه می‌داره از اون سپس در مسیر اتچمنت پرنتینگ و توجه خاص نشون دادن به اتچ و تئوریایی که در اتچمنت هستش و کارها و کسانی که مثل جان بولبی مثل خود دن سیگل که در این زندگی مدرن اتچمنت تئوری رو خوب برای مادر و پدر رو باز کرده و در کتاب بسیار خوبش Parenting from the Inside Out در رابطه با Interpersonal Neurobiology of Connection این اتچمنت و بستگی و دلبستگی مادر و پدر با فرزند و اهمیتی که این دلبستگی داره برای بهداشت روان برای توانمندی اون کودک برای اون اعتماد به نفسی که کودک داره برای سلامتی جان و تن اون کودک در اصل از اون سپس بزرگ شد و قدرت پیدا کرد و در تحقیقات جا افتاد و امروزه ما این قدرت آغوش و در بغل گرفتن و به صلاح جشن گرفتن این قدرت the power of hug امروزه بیش از همه روزها برای ما عزیز هستش حالا چرا این موضوع و به صلاح تاپیک رو برای شما عنوان می کنم در این هفته ای که گذشت روز جهانی هاگ بود National Hugging Day اینجا Hug Day LA در لس آنجلس گروه بسیار بزرگی جمع شدند و در جایی به اسم Agape Spiritual Center یه جایی هستش که کسانی که روحانی هستند یا شاید بیشتر گرایش های روحانی دارن اونجا جمع میشن و با هم دیگه مدیتیت میکنن یا در کنار هم هستن در اون سنتر در اون جای به خصوص روحانی از پنجاه کشور مختلف افرادی که پاسپورت های به صلاح امروزه یعنی پاسپورتی که میتونن امروز سوار هواپیما بشن و برن به کشورشون این افراد رو گینس ورلد رکورد اومد و گینس ورلد رکورد خب در جهان خیلی شاخص هستش و همیت بهش میدن این گروه اومدن این افراد رو به صلاح 
بررسی کردن و دیدن شناسایی کردن و دیدن که بله این پنجاه فرد از به صلاح سیتیزن های این کشورهای مختلف از این پنجاه کشور میان و در یک گرد همایی یک دایره در آغوش گرفتن و با هم بودن این پیام قدرتمند صلح و با هم بودن و اتحاد و در آغوش گرفتن همدیگه به عنوان یک سمبل همکاری، همدلی، همزیستی جشن گرفته شد. من هم خیلی به صلاح خوشحال بودم که بخشی از این گروه بودم و در کنار همکارهایی مثل The Hug Doctor و کسانی که این گروه رو تشکیل داده بودن ریک مورسن که در برنامه مام تاک قبلا با ایشون آشنا هستین نویسنده کتاب The Hug Store که تأسیس کننده Hug Alliance هستن و خلاصه یک گروه بسیار بسیار سمیمی و خوب که در این نشست بسیار گرم و عاشقانه در آگاپه همه در کنار هم آمدیم جشن گرفتیم با بچه هامون اومدیم من دخترام اونجا بودن و خیلی جالب بود که آخر شب که این برنامه تموم شد که خیلی هم طول کشید طولانی بود تمام روز بود دختر بزرگ من همینطور که از ماشین داشت پیاده می شد که بره و آماده خواب داشت می شد گفتش که مامی می دونی من همیشه فکر می کردم که می خوام پریزیدنت آمریکا بشم و می خوام مثلا در جیمناستیک یه فرد مهم بشم ولی امشب به این نتیجه رسیدم که اصلا من فقط می خوام آدم رو کمک بکنم و کمک کردن به دیگران برام خیلی پرمعنا هستش و مهم هستش و این حرف که زد من واقعا اون لحظه به این نتیجه رسیدم و برام خیلی خوشایند بود که وقتی بچه ها رو در این گرد همایی ها در این نشست ها میبریم که میبینن ما انسان ها چگونه میتونیم در کنار هم نشست داشته باشیم همدیگه رو در آغوش بگیریم با همدیگه مهربون باشیم با همدیگه همکاری بکنیم با همدیگه اون صدایی رو که برای صلح و آرامش و صلح جهانی هستش یکی بکنیم یکسان بکنیم با هم هم باشیم اتحاد داشته باشیم برای آینده بهتر برای این بچه هامون اینجا هستش که اون پیام مهم اتحاد برای صلح اتحاد برای صلح جهانی اتحاد برای زندگی بهتر برای فرزندان آیندهمون قدرت پیدا میکنه نشست دل پیدا میکنه و در این نشست دل این صدا این پیام پخش میشه چرا که روز بعد به مدرسه رفت و در مدرسهش جلوی کلاسش درباره این تجربه روز نشنال هاگینگ دی و صحبت هایی که با دکتر استون داشت و برنامه ریزی هایی که با دکتر ستون کرده و اینکه چرا 21 روز 21 دی جرنی براش مهم هستش و این کار رو میخواد انجام بده این براش معنا پیدا کرد بنابراین در این معنا بخشی و در کنارش هم فکر پروژه ای رو کرد که با کسی که اونجا آشنا شد کسی که به او یاد داد که فقط تو نیستی بلکه بچه های دیگه که به اندازه تو ندارن بچه هایی که کتاب ندارن بخونن اونها هم این در آغوش گرفتن یا حق کردن رو با تو میتونن سهیم باشن بنابراین با اون فرد در این گفتمان تصمیم گرفت که میخواد بره مدرسهش و تقاضا بکنه از معلمش از شاگردای دیگه که کتاب جمع آوری بکنن کتاب ها رو به صلاح برای یه بوک درایو جمع آوری بکنن و کتاب ها رو به این پروژه دونیت بکنن بنابراین در هر جنبه ای که حسابشو بکنین پیس لرنینگ کالتیویشن اف پیس کیوریوسیتی دی یس برین اون چیزایی که منتال هلث رو تشویق میکنه به صلاح بالا میبره ارتقای سلامت در روح و روان در این چارچوب این هاگینگ دی انجام شد. و حالا این برنامه رو از فارسی به زبان انگلیسی به خاطر میهمان گرامیم که The Hug Doctor هستن و دکتر Stone هستن منتقل میکنیم و در آخر برنامه اگر جایی بود میتونم این صحبت هایی رو که با Hug Doctor داشتیم برای شما ترجمه بکنم چرا که به صلاح فوکس و اون نیتی که برنامه مام تاک داره پل زدن در بین این روابط ما به خصوص روابط جهانی ما با زبانهای مختلف و اینکه چجوری ما میتونیم همکاری بکنیم چجوری یاد بگیریم چجوری ارتقا در آگاهی توانمندی و کانشسنس به خصوص توانمندی زنان مادران و خانواده بنابراین این 
نیت و توجه و اون اهمیتی هستش که مامتاک داره و در این برنامه برای شما این موضوع National Hugging Day رو باز کردیم و حالا با دکتر ستون در رابطه با اینکه چرا یک بغل یک هاگ اهمیت داره و چرا چه میکنه بر, بر بدن ما با او صحبت خواهیم کرد دکتر ستون ویلکم تو مام تاک Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So I did a little introduction as for who you are. You're a clinical psychologist. Yeah. You have uh, dedicated your career and your focus to helping families and helping families cultivate uh, peace, consciousness, mindfulness, a connection. And uh, tell us more about your story and at what point did you decide to uh, make a transition into the hug doctor world? Yes, it would be my pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Nelly. I'm a big, big fan. Um, so basically, I worked in college counseling a lot early in my career. And I really enjoyed working with the students. At a certain point, though, I felt like something was really missing. And I, I wasn't... Um, You know, I think the way that Oprah talked about it in her Golden Globe um, speech really resonated for me, that my personality wasn't aligned with what my soul was meant to do. And I started to get an urge to hug strangers, which, you know, my first book's called Hugging Strangers, and I don't want that to put anyone off. Um, it comes from the place of there really are no strangers, And it's only completely consensual hugging, you know? So if you connect with someone and then everybody wants to have a hug, you have a hug. Basically though, um, kind of going back to what like made me be the hug doctor is, and I don't know how much detail you want me to go into, but I had a hug with a stranger that wanted a hug and it was extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. it, it, had a huge impact on me, it had a huge impact on them, and at that moment, I knew that the rest of my life would be about sharing the power of hugs. And ever since then, I see everything through the lens of a hug, and it's a beautiful lens. That's wonderful, and, um, and I know in our field, Oftentimes, as uh, Dr. Daniel Siegel has researched it very well and has his latest book, The Yes Brain, uh, integrates this into uh, a really beautiful way of uh, differentiating uh, sort of the peace, the, the mind beneath the peaceful experience. And so when we know that the other human being or the other person, or doesn't have to be a person, sometimes it's an animal, uh, the other is uh, aligned with our uh, sort of internal state and they know that we know that they know that we know or they feel what we feel that they feel what we feel in that me and we and as he identifies it or has created this new word the we space there is just this um, balance this uh, state of equilibrium, which is, you know, probably that feeling of peace and blissfulness and connection that we feel as human beings. It, it is uh, through the power of hug that that space is cultivated and it grows. Like you said, if it's consensual, if there is readiness, if the two people are aligned and connect at the right time and place or cultivate that connection. A hundred percent. I mean, I, you said it beautifully. And, you know, one of the things that is really important to me is when people want to have hugs, mm -hmm. for them to hug longer and really, you know, I, a big thing is 21 second hugs. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a model for having longer hugs and being more connected to family and friends. And the 21 second hug is a metaphor for connection and it's also real. Having a 21 second hug has a lot of physiological benefits. So I bring that up because during the hug, 
you can communicate about your experience with the person that you're hugging. So let's say you're hugging your best friend, you can be talking during the hug and sharing you know, what's meaningful to you and, and how they matter to you and how you love them and how you care about them. You can also be communicating like, okay, that's enough hug for me right now. So it's, it's all about the connection and the, you know, what I call radical transparency of sharing exactly what you want and need which is so important in, in every domain. In other words, this is a lot about what I would call the space of a hug. Hmm. So you don't have to, to touch anyone to be in the space of a hug. Like right now with you, even though I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, you're in California, I totally feel the space of a hug with you because I know that we're aligned in the world being more connected and families being more connected and in these healthy connections. Mm. So it's the space of a hug too. I know I'm covering a lot of ground. <laughs> it's a little, oh, <laughs> can you see my hug from there? <laughs> yes. And yes. You know, so we're literally like in a long hug right now. And, and with the people watching this who are also in the same space mm -hmm. about wanting to be more connected with their family mm -hmm. and their friends. And, you know, it really comes back to the immediacy of this moment mm -hmm. and, and being profoundly connected in this moment. You know, we spend a lot of energy as humans thinking about the future and thinking about the past and it, you know, and that's part of how we're designed at the same time in a hug, it really slows you down and allows you to be fully present in the moment of the hug. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could do a 21 second virtual hug with you now. Like it's kind of like almost like a hugging meditation. Yeah. I don't know how we really want to best use this time. I know though that I'm super excited to be here with you and I, I love that your fans and everyone watching you, that you've created such a, a hugging space. So I, I acknowledge you for that. Thank you. And I have to say, um, when we lean into some of these experiences that perhaps were not part of our daily routine, you know, um, uh, d giving yourself a butterfly hug where you, you are feeling your hands and giving yourself self-love, in a way that is self-compassionate and it's mindful of you being here, present, and connecting to you, Stone, and connecting heart to heart and connecting with like-mindedness and enjoy and in a muy space that is really joyful is really um, something that I think we intentionally could cultivate more in our busy, rushed, technological lives uh, that uh, and speaking of you know personal experience you know I'm a mom of three we have a very busy life and busy schedule and so uh, ever since the National Hugging Day and the a wonderful international global experience we had and girls witnessing the 50 countries coming together, people loving each other and holding each other and creating that holding space. They are now, they've internalized it so much that within the past couple of days post this event, they wait they hug and they ask for longer hugs and they they're immersed in the joy of a connectional hug and so thank you for that thank you for talking to my girls um i know you and cami made a, a, a really strong connection and sh her and her friend uh manaya uh wanted to start the 21 day journey hug as well as me and, and uh, Angela, my dear friend. And so uh, for those viewers who are watching and would like to join this 20 days of just being mindful and immersed in this hug journey. 21 days. 21 days. 21. Yes, 21. <laughs> 21 days, yes, uh, which, oh is, yeah. which is a big commitment. 
You it know? Is. Yeah. So tell us about that and, and those viewers who are interested to hook up with you and, and talk more and commit or how is that done? Yeah, it's my it's my pleasure. And you know, it it takes something to commit to something for 21 days. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to have an intention that really matters to you as you go into it. At the same time, it's designed to be a fun and a magical experience that like aligns you with what you want to create. So, you know, it's, it's such a, an awesome journey. I've seen it impact people, including myself, in lots of really inspiring ways. You know, one of the best examples is a dear friend of mine who is a veteran and who and is, you know, completely okay with me sharing about his story. Um, you know, he was experiencing some depression, some anxiety, dealing with fibromyalgia, and, and you know, a this is a war hero. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing man who's been through a lot. And he was, you know, really feeling overwhelmed by life. And he went on a 21 day hugging journey on Facebook live. And he went from feeling like a victim to really feeling inspired. And now his like vision is, you know, working with veterans and making a difference for other people. Mm -hmm. So, it looks a lot of different ways depending on what you want to create. Mm -hmm. um, what it does, though, is it grounds you in the power of hugs and thinking more about hugs each day. So it's like, you know, when you start a 21-day hugging journey, you kind of look at your calendar and you say, you know, I don't know if it's most helpful for me to talk about it in relation to what we're working on with Give More Hugs. I could do that. Sure. Or I'm sure. Also thinking yeah, we're always interested in integrating uh, the different ways to cultivate peace within and b in between. And so that's a great way to integrate for families to also um, integrate, you know, in their relationships with their children as well as their communities and how they can help cultivate peace in the world. So, yes, please. A hundred percent. And it's, you know, it's about being like what I call radically transparent with yourself about what you want to create. You know, so much of the time we get caught up in life and life, you know, keeps us busy with lots of different things that we feel like we should be doing and we need to be doing. And, you know, down deep we have like sort of this burning passion to maybe do something for a charity or maybe do something with our kids that we're not doing. The 21 day hugging journey gives you permission to say, I'm going to do this for 21 days. And in a way that you learn and you discover things and you free yourself up to let life be an adventure. You know, it's, it's like rekindling that inner passion about something, doing something that really matters to you. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Mm -hmm. When someone's going on a 21 day hugging journey though, and I'm looking at different places cause I kind of want to look at you on the screen. I kind of want to look at me and I kind of want to look at the, where I'm supposed to be looking, which is the, all right. <laughs> um, basically though, Dr. Nelly, it's what I do when someone goes on a 21 day hugging journey is I talk to them at the beginning about what their intention is. At the end of 21 days, what do you want to see? Anything you want. You know, like, what is it that you want at the end of the 21 days that would light you up? And then there are some different things that we set in motion for that first week. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we're thinking, of, my team is thinking about, like, doing something for Mother's Day, doing, like, a countdown to Mother's Day in, in, in May. And so we're, like, kind of planning around a 21-day countdown to Mother's Day, being more connected to mom. And I talk about it a little bit because it's, like, it can look a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. That's one concrete example, though, of like, what would you do over the next 21 days to be more connected with your mom? Mm -hmm. And then we focus in on that. 
there's other things that happen kind of magically and organically during the process when you start to have longer hugs and more hugs with people that want them. Things just kind of open up mm -hmm. and you leave room to be surprised about when you say to somebody, I'm sending you a virtual hug with lightness and joy. And they're like, wow, that changed my whole perspective today. Like that really like landed with me in a powerful way. Mm -hmm. So it's having like the consistency over the 21 days. And then I um, talk with whoever's going on the 21 day hugging journey, whether it's a whole classroom or whatever it might be at the end of the first week to talk about what were the kind of the hugging highs? What was something that you said you were going to do and you didn't do? And then what was in the way of doing that? Mm -hmm. So that the, the next week, you have kind of renewed energy and we get you charged up about what you're creating until, and so we touch base at the end of the first week, the end of the second week, the end of the third week. And then for people that were fired up on their 21 day hugging journeys, they become a hugging ambassador. And this is like a lifelong thing because hugs ground us in what really matters, which is connection, which is like quality time with our family and hugging our family in the moment. You know, we live such busy lives that a lot of times it's like, love you, and we just touch and we're gone. Love you, but heaven forbid that's the last time you get to, to be with them. Slow down, mm -hmm. have that hug. We live busy lives and you have 21 seconds to give your kids a hug before they go. And if you don't, I suggest looking at your schedule and finding 21 seconds mm -hmm. for your kids, for your partner, for your good friends, and for people you feel connected to. So that's a little taste. It's, it's a lot because it's really specific for each person that goes on it, what they want to create. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in my book that's going to be coming out, which is called Hug Therapy, and it's in process, so it'll probably be out like hopefully the end of the year. And I'm, I'm happy to share it with, with listeners now if, if they want that. I have like a baseline, mm -hmm. like a hugging baseline to look at all the domains of your life and rate them, how those are, are going. And, um, and as I talked about, Dr. Nelly, I'm going to share the draft with you, and you're welcome to, to share it um, freely with people. I want people to look at like, okay, this domain in my life's not going so well, and I could go on a 21 day hugging journey, have what I want in that domain. Mm. You know, because this is it. Like, this is it right now. This is our chance to go for it. And the power of hugs is so profound that it can charge us to create it, and we create it together. Beautiful. And, and such good timing because. Uh, I feel like the technology in many ways, you know, has helped us. We've made a lot of opportunities and advancements. And, you know, if it wasn't because of technology, you and I wouldn't be talking and having this conversation. And so in many ways, it's wonderful that we're connecting uh, on technology. But also, we are um, in some ways disconnected from perhaps our kids because we use technology. You know, in research, they're finding that the avoidant attachment style category is uh, going up, it's increasing. So in other words, compared to uh, 10 years ago, um, the rate of insecure attachment, especially in the avoidant category, avoidant attachment category, which uh, they attributed to parents who are preoccupied, parents who are not as attuned or connected to their children, this type of attachment, um, which can lead to uh, psychological stress and issues and um, you know, anxiety and depression is going up, it's increasing. The rate of suicide, especially amongst teenagers, has gone up so much within, in some areas, 60%. So it's an epidemic. It's a very, very big problem, especially in our field, the field of mental health. So it's really important to bring your work, uh, Dr. Stone, the Hug Doctor, as well as peace learning, because it is a journey. It's a journey of learning about how do we cultivate in whatever area that we're missing or not connected, how do we build connections? How do we build the yes brain 
uh, type of connection. When we're feeling empowered, we're feeling able, we're feeling that, like my daughter said, helping another human being becomes more successful, more valuable than winning in a sport or winning something that is of value to her. So making that mindset shift or that peace learning mindset is very, very critical during this particular time in history. And so for the work that you do, I find it so valuable, so successful, so important that we spread your beautiful message that we need to connect. We're human beings. You saw the baby twins, the twin girl who was wow. perhaps going to lose her life. And in that moment, a very gentle, loving hug from her sister perhaps saved her life. So imagine what we can do, you know, how we can save each other and rescue each other if we are more, a little more connectional, a little more giving, a little more um, huggable. Yes, 121% um, you said it beautifully, you captured it beautifully. It brings up a lot, a lot of things. For, for example, men, boys tend to be more stoic. Yes. And, and you know, the, the veteran um, that I was talking about before, um, Gary Hobble Jr., you know, no one really knew that he was struggling so much because he had put on a face that everything was okay, that he was really struggling. Mm -hmm. And that's so many, sadly, that, that commit suicide. You know, that people don't know that they feel isolated and alone and helpless or hopeless. And, you know, the hugging space, like reaching out to someone and being honest and authentic and Truth in love is so important that we're not isolated and, and social media can result in that more, just as you were saying, and it is an epidemic. And, you know, the hug is the antidote. It, it really is the hugging space, mm -hmm. you know, not being disconnected, like people connecting with each other and being honest about getting the help and, and the support and the connection that they want and that they need. And, you know, it's, it's a very serious um, issue and it's, it's cool that hearts are so powerful that we can connect people and use the internet and social media and all the tools at our disposal to have people be more connected. Um, so, you know, I acknowledge everything that you're doing with your show, and I think that, you know, 21 Day Hugging Journeys can bring more people into focus on being connected with people mm -hmm. that, that may feel disconnected for whatever reasons. And mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it, if you think about it a little bit, like our wiring as people is to want to be safe. It's like a survival mechanism. And I say, you know, sometimes it's an overly active survival mechanism. So it's like we're protecting ourselves sometimes when we don't need to be protecting ourselves. And we stay in kind of our comfort zone or our safety zone and don't take any, any risks. And that can be very damaging because we're isolated. Mm -hmm. I want people to be in the hugging zone, out of their comfort zone a little bit, that feels like right for them. It's just enough out of their comfort zone, into the hugging zone, where they're kind of pushing and they're kind of growing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they're allowing for some connection or some activity that, although scary, reminds them and makes them feel alive. Mm. Not into the danger zone, the hugging zone, which may include a real hug physically or may include saying to somebody, I miss you and I feel alone right now, mom or best friend or daughter. Like, I don't know what's going on with me right now. I just don't 
things don't feel right. Like I feel like I'm down a lot of the time and I'm confused or, you know, opening up about that and having access to whether, you know, it's a psychologist and therapy, whether, you know, it might be medication might be appropriate sometimes and a psychiatrist might be involved. Maybe it's getting into an exercise program, which we know, you know, is a really powerful thing for fighting depression, although it's tricky because when one's depressed, it's so hard to be able to be exercising. So it's kind of a, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. All of this starts with acknowledging where you're at, and that has to happen in the hugging zone. And, and if we get more people who are in that hugging zone and reaching out to other people, like, I haven't heard from you in a couple weeks, everything okay? And the other person's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the friend is like, no, 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 I haven't heard from you in a couple weeks. Mm. I know everything is not okay. Like, I know. And being radically transparent, like, it is not okay for me that you are completely off the radar. I love you. I care about you. You know, we need to figure out something because, you know, I'm here for you. And, you know, maybe you're going over to that friend's house and giving him a hug. And maybe that hug is you know, sending a fruit basket or writing a, I mean, a hug can be any positive sharing of energy mm, mm. is the way that I define a, a hug. And so, yeah, I mean. Beautiful. And, and it is uh, profound. I think that the shift that we see uh, in uh, a lot of families who today complain about, in my practice, I have families who complain about transactional relationships. They say, listen, like we feel like we're in a transactional marriage or we're in a transactional relationship with our BFF or, you know, friends with benefit. Teenagers are complaining constantly about, um, you know, being in these fake relationships that they feel, uh, you know, are very transactional. And so the power of hug and what you're, uh, uh, really intentionally opening up for us to wonder with our minds, the mind beneath the hug, to wonder. So if we are connectional beings, which we are, we know that. We know that from research as well as uh, the longevity research and how human beings grow in wellness, happiness, and pursuit of happiness. So we know the science, Dr. Siegel and uh, all the elite scientists have proven, you know, when the field of telomeres, um, you know, fighting cancer, living healthy long lives and happiness, we know as psychologists that we are connectional human beings. And so if we're to honor that, that uh, human right, <laughs> which is, you know, we are connectional human being, it's our right to connect to another human being in a meaningful way, then what are we doing to cultivate that? What are we doing to promote that? How much of our intent and life and energy are we putting into it? Because like Dr. Siegel says, where attention goes, energy flows. So are we intentionally pouring our energy into connecting and holding each other accountable. So if we don't like transactional relationships, then it's a choice to move in to a more meaningful relationship. So what do we need to do to um, be a contributor of the peace learning within that journey and to help each other become more aware? Because at the end of the night, our awareness or our insight will spread. So if I'm aware and I talk to my husband and his awareness goes up and our children's awareness goes up, we're cultivating that type of peace, learning, and awareness in our little community. Certainly. Yes? Certainly. And, and again, beautifully said. And to, to do that, like the, you know, we said before, it's like three weeks is kind of a big commitment. Mm. At the same time, it's three weeks of being more connected to self. Yes. You know, three weeks of embracing yourself, mm -hmm. embracing others, embracing, you know, everyone around you and being in this loving, hugging space. So that feels it, wonderful. <laughs> and, and, you know, th there's a, you know, we, we make up stories like, oh, no, three weeks. It's like a long time. You know, it's like, oh, no, 21 seconds, it's a long time. Like, mm -hmm. it's a long time to hug. 
you know, it's it's all our way that we look at it. You know, three weeks is kind of like a drop in the bucket of how many weeks we have in our lives, mm-hmm. hopefully. And to choose to take three weeks to focus in on the power of hugs mm-hmm. is, you know, it's epic. Yep. Just like it was at National Hugging Day to have people from all over the world engaged in a hug to work at setting a Guinness World Record. You know, it's it's the hug is the delivery system mm-hmm. for world peace. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It. Yeah, you're right on, and I can attest to it because yesterday was my day one. So I, uh, I guess, uh, what do you call it? I um, committed. <laughs> I, uh, with you and Angela and the girls, uh, embarked on this beautiful journey of uh, the 21 days of hugs. And so yesterday was my day one. And you know what it did for me was it helped me become a little more thoughtful in cultivating a more connectional experience. So in the morning, I, you know, sometimes go hiking by myself with my dog. I call my friend and I said, would you like to join me? So then it created this relational experience that perhaps maybe sometimes I'm uh, a little more autonomous or, you know, a little more individualistic. So now it's a little more collective. And uh, as we're hiking, I explain this 21 day journey uh, hug and uh, what it's all about. And uh, she was so intrigued and interested. And at the end of our hike, we embrace each other and give ourselves a a really long hug. And I think it was a little beyond 21 seconds, but it felt so good. And I had never hugged her. I've known her for years, years. We had children together. We've gone through so much together. I never embraced her in the way that I did uh, yesterday. And so it was so joyful. It was so joyful. I have to interrupt you because I'm so touched, moved, and inspired that that's the hug that you had yesterday. Like, that's amazing, and it's so beautiful. And let it really wash over you that you created that hugging experience with her. Like, that was all you. You know, that was all your 21-day hugging journey, that you created that space, and you had that. And... And that's expressing the love that's there and like really expressing it. And it's just. (laughs) So thank you for that. Thank you for inspiring me. And of course, the girls have been hugging and hugging and hugging. Um, We will continue our conversation with you, Dr. Stone. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on Mom Talk today. And much love and peace and a big hug to all of you all around the world. And you as well, Stone. Biggest hug back to you, Dr. Nelly. And I'm so inspired by your 21-day hugging journey and sending you a hug with lightness and joy and a profound power of hugs to connect us all. May the peace learning journey be with you. Thank you so much.